Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at yet another problem with Intel right after this. Uh, so here we go again. It's never, I mean, we. I've heard the predictions, I've heard the industry pundits that are in security say, the only way this is going to stop is if we just start over, get a new processor, redesign it from the ground up. But yeah, we're back into it again. We've, there's been new uh, exploits discovered, and we're going to talk a little bit about all of them just to kind of put things in perspective of just how bad this has been. So you probably remember that this all started with Spectre and Meltdown back in 2018. And we had issues that showed up in the speculative execution portions of the Intel CPU chips. And that affected not just Intel, but also ARM. It affected AMD. It affected even the IBM PowerPC series of chips. So yeah, there was a lot of people that were affected by these, particularly with Spectre. Now, Meltdown definitely was a problem that was found just on the Intel hardware. But I'm going to leave this up here for a minute. You can read that. I'm not going to read it to you. Uh, if you know, There's plenty of articles that are out, both in the Wikipedia, out on the web. It's done by individuals. But I wanted to put everything kind of in one bucket. So, yeah, we've had over since 2018, we've just had one after another after another. We had Foreshadow, which, which again was speculative execution. Then we had Riddle, which affected the microarchitectural data sampling, or the MDS. Uh, and that allowed us to extract data from the systems as they were running to get it, pull it out of the cache or pull it out of, out of the, like the Foreshadow out of the SGX, which is the software guard extensions. That is supposed to be Intel security enclave for protecting things like encryption keys. And if you remember my talk that I did a couple of weeks ago, that would have been the root of trust in an Intel processor. So if you're able to extract data from your root of trust, you got a problem. And you got a problem with security. Now, yes, I know, none of these have, to date, have shown any uh, exploits as far as we know in the wild. These are all lab exploits, but it just shows that how bad things really are in terms of, uh, and well, let's just go through it. You got zombie load, you got fallout, another, both of those are MDS class attacks. You have Spectra, which is another speculative execution branch. Uh, and this one affected uh, the swap GS instruction set on Windows. Then we had Snoop, Another one, it was a cache level sync problem, data link, uh, data value injection. A little bit different, this allows me to modify data that's inside of the CPU, not just extract it, but also change it. There was port smash, which I remember when that one happened, uh, VMware issued a, a notice that recommended that you turn off hyper-threading in Intel processors, and I believe that is still up on their site. I haven't checked recently, but I believe that is still their, their take on things, is you do not run with SMT on. Uh, also, Lazy FP, another speculative execution. Uh, and yeah, there's still more. We got Branch Scope, which uh, was a side channel attack. Spoiler, which is another speculative execution vulnerability. Netcat, this one allowed uh, data to be extracted uh, remotely over a network and, and it affected just the server grade Xeon processors at the time and uh, also uh, our DMA, remote direct access memory. Uh, There's also SGX uh, Pectra, which uh, was an adapted attack to allow uh, data to be extracted from the secure areas of the SGX. This exploited bugs in the software development kits and those were SGX uh, SDK and Rust SGX SDK and uh, Graphene SGX SDK. TPM fail, I did something on. That was not as big a deal as we thought it was. Uh, there's also Plunder Vault, which allows you to modify and play. If you play around with the voltages on the CPU, you're able to leak data out of the chipset. 
Uh, and yeah, some of these are pretty esoteric. I realize that, but you know, it just you just make. And then yes, two new ones. And they both of these affects XGX. Uh, so these allow us to break into the fortified areas of the CPU region of XGX using side channel attacks. And there's two of them. There's uh, SGX, which allows me to grab large chunks of data, and uh, also crosstalk. Uh, both of these took a number of months to, to, uh, to get the code working for those. Crosstalk has been around for a while, but uh, they just recently patched it and released it on June the 9th of this year. Also, uh, SGAX has been around for five months and in the wild, and it took a while. Uh, Intel says their newer CPUs are not vulnerable to these attacks, and they have released microcode uh, for the older CPU chipsets. And I, I have yet to find uh, any of the utilities that are out there to do checks on vulnerabilities to see if these have been checked yet. They're not caught up. So uh, clearly, clearly, I mean, uh, Intel has always kind of been focused on speed, right? Single core performance, multi core performance, gaming performance, uh, uh, being able to have higher performing uh, machines that are under loads and server farms that are executing multiple cores. And they don't appear to me, and this is just my opinion, that they are focusing on security. They are focusing on performance. So I noticed that they seem to be in a reactive mode here where the security researchers find something. And I mean, to be honest, ever since Spectre Meltdown, the security experts and the researchers, since they know that this vulnerability is, exists, they have been tweaking and twisting their code to see if they can get data to pop out in any other way that they can force it to occur. So. Yeah, I mean, once they know how to do something, they're going to spend a lot of time trying to exploit it more and more and more. And they are doing just that, which, I mean, that, that's a good thing. Uh, but Intel, on the other hand, appears to me, and this is just an opinion, appears to me to be in reactive mode. Uh, I mean, they should be, at this point, should, I think, should be taking a step back and going, wait a minute, this is not good. This is, this is hurting our reputation. We should be doing something about this, and we should be redesigning the systems from the ground up for security instead of most of the things that Intel does, as you can see here, are extensions. Extensions are bolt-ons uh, to the uh, system to sell product, right? Uh, so it's a feature that they think they need in order to be able to sell their CPUs, but they're not secure, and I mean... I mean, I, I would I would hesitate to be using SGX in any system, uh, even though I know that these have been patched and working. I, what's next? What else is going to break? That would be my concern. So, um, what are the alternatives here? What, what can we do? So. As of March 2020, Risk Five announced two working groups discussing security extensions to their uh, base ISAs, which are their specifications for both privileged and unprivileged execution on their chipsets uh, that they are, of course, designing in an open source. Somebody asked me recently on one of my videos, why do we need open source CPUs? <laughs> Look back at the slides in this video. That's why you need an open source baseline, is you need many eyeballs looking at this. And if you're not, if you're not, if you're not putting the time and effort into making sure that your security offerings are are good ones, then you're going to have a repeated breakage like Intel is suffering through right now. I don't know if there'll be another one. I, I have no idea. I mean, I would bet. I wouldn't bet my. Uh, I wouldn't bet against it. I would put it that way. Uh, I think that the likelihood of another uh, breach or another vulnerability being discovered is probably pretty good. But anyway, uh, so they're working on two things. They're working on cryptographic extensions, and this is to improve the performance of the cryptographic algorithms themselves. So the first ones they're working on are the vector type algorithms such as uh, AES and SHA-2. 
the next step that they will work on next will be the scalar ex, uh, extensions, which would be in the more modern shift and <clears throat> and ones that work in spiral and some of those kinds of uh, algorithms that form those the backbone of those cryptographic algorithms. But they're also working on trusted execution extensions or TEEs. TEE is kind of a broad base. Uh, I mean, ARM calls one of their, and we'll talk about that, one of theirs a TEE as well. But this really is the, the core formation of the security layers within the CPU, and that would, again, it would, it would form a root of trust. So they have released their first draft for poll, not for public comment yet. This is just, do we have everything that we think we need? So if you are interested in participating in that, I would urge, I would really encourage you to do so. Uh, you can join the uh, Risk Five Foundation and join up with one of these standing committees and get involved. If you're a security researcher, get involved if you can, and helping to define this. They're certainly looking for any any class of people that can help them define this, and I think that's great. Uh, <clears throat> so. But they're, what they're trying to do is to define a new security approach to physical memory protection, PMP, but also how to isolate one process from another, uh, all, n not only as it's executing in the CPU or as cache as, it's, as the CPU is caching or any of those kinds of operations, but also what happens, how do you, how do you maintain isolation between the areas of private memory that that application and the CPU is, are using. Uh, how do you prevent the memory leaks from one application into another? I mean, how do you fence those off securely so that there is no chance for an application to <clears throat> grab memory uh, out of another application space? And then finally, uh, one of the biggest dangers is when you pass control because you're passing data along with that control usually either to, uh, to continue an operation on down the pipe or to you know, send a result back out to the application to say, hey, this is the end result of the application run. So yeah, so both of those committees are overseen by the RISC-V Foundation Security Standing Committee, or the SSC. And yes, they're definitely looking for people actively to help them with this. So this is in the early formation stages of their design. Uh, this They believe that, and I, th I have to commend them for this, they believe that this is core to their success. I've heard their CEO say this several times that she said that, you know, without this, it, it just is not going to work. I mean, we have to have security at the core of our design. So, and so that's why I think open source is needed. What about ARM? <clears throat> ARM has uh, their trust zone technology. It's hardware enforced isolation that's built into the CPU. It's a root of trust that's also built on the platform security architecture or PSA guidelines. Uh, <clears throat> they do offer different specs for the, the Cortex-A and Cortex-M <clears throat> uh, line of processors, of course, because they do <clears throat> function differently. Uh, it's currently available uh, on their ARM version 8, but of course, you know, ARM is proprietary, so their specifications they publish but they don't share their code. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> unless you license it from them. Uh, there's new features like secure boot, secure interrupts, secure states, uh, state transition protection, and memory management security attributes. I'm not sure uh, exactly what that means. I haven't done all my homework into the ARM set of how this all functions. Uh, but yes, that it would be one way <clears throat> to fence off memory from one application to another as you just don't permit it to be read or written uh, unless you have attributes turned on that do allow shared access from other applications. Uh, system interconnect security uh, code, uh, secure code, data and memory, that seems pretty comprehensive, and trusted firmware. Now that whether or not, <clears throat> I mean, ARM has been vulnerable to some of the speculative execution attacks. Uh, but in the in the recent versions, uh, they have not been uh, uh, vulnerable, or even uh, uh, have even uh, they are indicating that they're not vulnerable to some of them. Now, in my ARM sevens, there are some here that are still vulnerable uh, to the type of attacks that uh, were listed in previously. So, yeah, 
ARM does have some problems with that. AMD has been vulnerable in the past to some of the speculative execution exploits. Uh, <clears throat> they have said that their newer chips are not uh, affected by most of them. Now, I don't, <clears throat> I don't have a list. I don't know which ones of those there are. Uh, however, with all of these issues, here's, here's, here's some advice. <clears throat> don't assume that just because Intel's having these problems, that these problems won't show up on your processor as well, or other, pro or other uh, exploits won't show up. The, pr the issue here is, I mean, don't assume that RISC-V, ARM, and AMD are better. That would be a fatal mistake. Uh, the, the issue here is that the security researchers are focusing on Intel. Intel's been around longer, they've been working on it longer with Intel, and yeah, so they're gonna find more and more breakage on Intel. They haven't started on AMD yet. They haven't started on RISC V yet. They haven't started on ARM yet. Give them time. They may come around and find the same kinds of errors, the same kind of issues with those processes. Don't know. But I think that the answer here is we really need an open source method methodology to secure for, with the security researchers playing a role in its testing and making sure that it will meet uh, the design criteria. Now, um, that is a pretty lengthy process, and it's not something that, I mean, you saw, you, you, you saw that, well, this started out, what, 2018, and here we are two years later, and we're still finding things, and we probably will continue to find things. But I think that keeping security researchers in the loop will help identify those issues quicker uh, before they are become, you know, fielded, uh, and then we have to deal with them out here in the real world. So, anyway, that's... Uh, <laughs> That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed this talk. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below on this. Uh, I just think it's unfortunate that Intel is suffering through this and over and over again. I would have thought by now that they would have said, whoa, stop. Let's, uh, let's. But, you know, they're succumbing to market pressures. They have to keep producing something new and remaining competitive or they're going to get run over by AMD. Uh, in fact, AMD has run them over <laughs> in a lot of different areas. So... Yeah, uh, I can understand what the pressures are. It's a difficult problem to have to deal with, and I wish them the best of luck in trying to solve it. Uh, it, it benefits us all to have competitors in the marketplace, right? So with that, hope to see you all again real soon, and please like and subscribe, and bye for now.